Okay, so welcome back. I'm the same guy as before. Uh, finally, all alone, no, 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 not anymore with Brendan. Um, this talk is basically how you can start your path to become a data scientist. Um, as I said, I'm Francisco Dizio, the same guy as before. Uh, same company, Rhythm Meet. I'm the analytics tech lead of the company since a few years. You can find me on, on Twitter or on LinkedIn. You have a, a website and I write a lot of blogs for my company uh, blog post. The company itself is the same as before, so let's not waste time there. So, first question. You want to become a data scientist, but what is a data scientist? We have been hearing that that the scientist is like gold. Everybody wants one and they are paid really well. In no matter where you are, in any kind of country, there is the rise of the need of data scientist. So the problem is that the definition of data scientist is hard. Most of the time, the data scientist is just a data analyst which lives in California. Because really, the barrier between data analysts and data scientists are not so clear. On the other side, when you think about a data scientist, you think about a guy who has a lot of knowledge. First of all, about programming languages, because he knows a lot probably about R or about Python, which are the two most common uh, languages used in order to create machine learning models to solve data science problems. We saw SQL earlier, and we will come back to that. That is just the first part. If you know only R and, and Python, you know nothing. You have also to have an understanding of what are the basics of data science and machine learning, which is more or less statistics and linear algebra. And again, if you know both of these words, you are in the right segment of being a data scientist. The third component, which is key, is also having a knowledge of the business itself because you can be a perfect on paper data scientist without any knowledge of the business you are going not probably not going to make any good result for your company not going to achieve any end goal for your company as you can understand there is a lot of knowledge that is required in order to be a data scientist which is not common in the custom like people that we find in companies if you think about a data analyst most of the time, the data analyst knows really well SQL, has a deep knowledge of, um, of the business itself, but doesn't have the, for example, the statistics or the coding skills needed in order to become a data scientist. And we know that data scientists are expensive. So how can we solve this kind of problem of willing to solve data science problems but not being able to find or to afford to um, several data scientists. The solution for this is what I call the low hanging fruit theory. Instead of basically trying to upscale, which will take a lot of time, all the people within your organization to arrive at a certain level of data science, let's take data science and let's bring it down to all the people. So what is, uh, uh, what is also called democratizing data science. And this is a kind of a flow coming not from Oracle, but from a lot of other tools. If you start thinking about the word citizen data scientist, it's basically a data scientist and not a pure data scientist. It's more or less a data analyst that has some sort of knowledge or some sort of tools that allow him to do data science. Let's see some like really easy um, problems that we could solve with this low hanging fruit theory. For example, I, me as a business analyst, I want to understand what are the drivers of my sales. The old way of doing things was, well, you know, I asked to an expert, a colleague, and he will tell me that, look, based on my experience, I can guess that the drivers are A, B, C. For example, if you want to sell gelatos, if you ask to an expert in Europe, he will tell you, look that if you sell gelatos during June, July, August, and September, your revenue will be higher than the rest of the year. The problem with this is that this is related to personal bias. We saw in the presentation before what personal bias or can, can, can do, can 
change the shape of the data and cannot represent the reality. If you ask the same question about selling gelados to a guy in Australia, we'll give you the exact opposite answer. They will tell you if you sell gelados from December to February, you will sell more than the rest of the years. What if we could have a tool that could tell us, look that based on the data set that you're feeding me with, these are the statistically significant drivers of fuel sales. Without human bias, he's only analyzing the data. Again, you will have to check that the data is representative of the reality that you are exposing, that you are analyzing, but still having the computer understanding the driver is really useful because the computer can do a lot more calculation better than us, can understand patterns between a lot of different columns, while in our brain we are limited to like three or four columns at the same time. The computer can do this analysis faster and better than us. And this is what really is called augmented analytics. So the tool itself is not a static tool that we have to use in order to create visualization. It's the tool itself that gives us back, once we attach to data set, a set of suggestions. Another example, I, well, I'm calling my clients, but I want to optimize my, the, the rate of sales that I, I'm going to do. So I want to understand before making the call if the client is likely to accept the offer or not. If I start with zero knowledge, I'm basically in a 50-50 uh, chance option. So with zero knowledge, 50% of the time, the client will say yes and 50% no. What if with a simple set of instructions, a simple GUI, I could create a machine learning model, which will give uh, me the confidence, 70% of probability of knowing if a client will uh, say yes or no. This potentially means for myself, which I, is the person doing the call, that if I, I'm only uh, going to call clients which are likely to accept the offer, it's potentially a 20% upsell in my daily calls. So even without involving a data, science, a data scientist, sorry, if I'm able to create such model, which is far for, from perfect, but still is helping me achieving a little goal. Well, if you think about those two problems, we already have the solution, which no matter what, uh, it's Oracle Analytics Cloud. Again, I've been in the session from, from Philippe and in the previous session, Oracle Analytics Cloud is the perfect analytical platform because it solves all the functions, all the analytical functions within your company. What are the, all the, uh, the analytical functions? It's classic and modern. Classic is where business people were writing down requirements, passing that to IT. It, IT was building the solution and business were only basically the uh, end users. They were only seeing some, a pre-built, for example, dashboard. There were some analytical capabilities, but were somehow limited. Modern on the other side is the end user is able to connect to any data set and to create any type of content. Classic, the classic of OEC is similar to OBA 12C, 11G, 10G, I don't know where, which version you're in. The key thing about classic is that it's centrally maintained and governed. So it's really good if you want still to have the unique source of truth within your company. You have still interactivity, so you can create dashboards with parameters. You can create navigation paths between various dashboards. And then you have the option, as was mentioned in the uh, upgrade talk, of creating pixel perfect for money with BI Publisher. And BI Publisher is one of the best tools in the market in order to create that kind of content. The action frameworks allow you to uh, increase the interactivity of your dashboard. So you can not only analyze data, you can also do the next step. So if, for example, sales are dropping, you want the business user to be able to click on the sales and do the next action to the, in the next tool that your company has. On the other side, you have modern data discovery where you can attach to the data, you can do data preparation. So you can change the, 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 the shape of the data. You can join different data set, transform, aggregate, and you can create repeatable flows, sorry. Oops. Uh, repeatable flows, which are mini TLs that you can use in order to 
change the shape of the data and to aggregate uh, different data sources together. And then you can create stunning visualization, which are in line with all the other self-service tools out in the market. And the cool thing that you can then create a storyboard and you can share your findings with your colleagues. Oracle Analytics Cloud is good because it has both, but it's really the only tool in the market which has both together, with, with, that allows you to do hybrid analytics. Hybrid because you can use the centralized reporting, you can create unique source of truth within your organization, and you can also have the option of specific access control if you have, for example, finance data or HR data where the, the, sensitive, the, the privacy topic is sensitive, you can set the specific access control for those um, data sources and as well use those data sources with the service area, doing free discovery, doing data enrichment, exter external data enrichment and data cleaning, and also to go from raw data to insight within minutes. I wrote a, um, a presentation uh, last year about trying to find the, the right balance between centralized reporting and self-service and how work analytics is actually the tool that allows you to do so. On top of this, we have also what I was calling before augmented analytics. So the tool is not only passive, it's active, it's suggesting us what to do. So it suggests, for example, data enrichment. You have the, for example, the city name in your data set it will ask you, do you want me to add, add the zip code? You have the option to do one click advanced analytics. So for example, if you have the last five months of sales, it will tell you, do you want me with two clicks to do the forecast for you? It has natural language processing. So instead of me trying to understand how to build the, the sales trend from the data sources that I see, I can just ask, give me the sales per country. It will parse my question and will generate the uh, the output for me if the data sets are present in in the, the analytical platform and then it has a nice feature that we will see later that is called explain explain will tell me what i have to know about a certain column within a certain data set and also it has the option as philip mentioned this morning to do more advanced machine learning so i can create machine learning models and I can use them directly within the platform. So we understood what a data scientist is. We understood which tool we are using in order to become a data scientist. The missing uh, question, the missing answer is, how do I become a data scientist with Oracle Analytics Cloud? And there is a process that you have to follow if you want to solve data science problem. And we are going to mimic exactly the same flow with Oracle Analytics Cloud. The first step in order to solve a data science problem is actually not done in the tool, is, is done outside of the tool, and is generally the problem definition. There is no general purpose data science. You will have to define what problem you are trying to solve, what data set you are using, which column is the data set, within the data set you will try to predict, and how will you will measure if the prediction is good or bad. There are various ways that you can define this. There are very, very metrics that, um, uh, that you can use in order to define how precise is um, a model. And it's up to you to define the metric, the KPI, that uh, fits better your problem. Because defining the KPI is the first step that later will drive also the model that you will choose in order to do your prediction. Once you define the model, which is the pre-step done outside the platform, now we start talking about what they call the six steps into data science. So six steps, let's see them, and then we will go in detail. First thing, you connect to the data. There is no data science, no much learning without data. So we need to be able to connect to the data set. Second step, we need to clean the data set. We will see later there are a lot of cases, a lot of things. We, don't, we cannot expect our data to be perfect. We will need to clean it a little bit. Third option, we need to transform and enrich the data. Again, we cannot expect the source data to be perfect, to be fitted into machine learning model. We may want to add column, we may want to 
do some sort of calculation between various columns. When we transform and enrich, the fourth is analyze the data. Check what's in there, check if the data set is correct, check if it's ready to be part by machine learning model. And then it's time to train the machine learning model and evaluate the results. Train more than one machine learning model and then compare various machine learning models together. Last bit, once we are happy with the model, we can use the model for predictions. So let's see how these six steps can be achieved with our analytics. First one, connect. We have a huge amount of connection options. With OEC, we have the option of reusing the central source of truth within my, our company with the predefined data models, which are made, created by the IT department. Or we can attach to any kind of external data source. As you see here, this is a slide, a screenshot taken some time ago. There is a huge variety of uh, external data sources that I can attach to. And uh, this list is increasing every release of OSC. Once we attach, this is just the first step. Next step is we need to clean. What do we need to clean? There are several things that we need to take into consideration. First of all, missing values. What if I have a column where the, the age of the person and the age is missing? How do I substitute that? Do I, do I want to substitute that? Do I, sub, do I substitute the, the, the missing value with the average of the ages of the people? The average of the ages of that particular zone? Those are all considerations that I need to do. Uh, again, the, in this case, the uh, selection of the, uh, the, the character is not correct, but the two basically mark are spelled differently. One has a capital A, the other doesn't have. If we don't match the two names uh, to be equal, the machine learning model will thread the, the two values as different. So if we want the machine learning model to thread two values as the same, we have to make the same. Then if we want to, for example, pre create a predictive model for the city of Milan, should we keep the data of the city of Rome into consideration for our training? Or are the, those data only going to screw the model? Then another important step is giving the column names from our data set a proper name. This is very important, not for the machine learning model because the computer itself will not care less if you call a column, column A or person name. But it's for you, once the model creates a prediction, to be able to explain your business user, look that the, the prediction is using the person name, it's far easier than saying, or oh, just fine, look that the uh, model creates a prediction based on column A. So labeling columns is great for, for explainability. And then we have to handle the outliers. We saw in the previous uh, talk, all the data set from uh, the UK, those data sets, since what they were coming from a single person, they could, we could think about them as outliers because they are a small representation, a small data set, which is not really re representative of the truth. So should we remove them, change them a little bit? And then we need to also think about feature scaling. For example, if you want to predict the house price and you have, I don't know, a feature which contains the number of bathrooms within a flat and another feature which contains the square meters of the house, you can understand that those two features are on different scale. If you don't put everything on the same scale, some of the machine learning models will try to optimize better the feature on a larger scale than the feature on the smaller scale. So doing feature scaling is also something that you should think of. And then again, when we attach to um, raw data set, we cannot expect the data set to be ready. So we may need, for example, to aggregate the data. If we have the click stream, we want to aggregate the data for, for example, number of clicks per session. Lastly, we want to split our original data set into train and test data set because we want to train the model with our data set and we want actually to test the model with data points that the model didn't see before. 
because we want to understand if the model can generalize enough to understand new, new problems, new patterns. So how do we do this kind of cleaning? Well, as I said before, there is a component within uh, Oracle Analytics, which is called data flow. Data flow allows you to create mini ETLs. You can filter, join, aggregate, transform. Again, this is a screenshot taken some time ago. You have a lot of options. And as uh, Philip said before, you have also a lot of options that can reuse analytical power in the database. So you have a huge amount of options that you can use in order to create this kind of mini details. And if you think about the problems that we saw before with an ETL mindset, you can see that all of the problems that we saw before are just really examples of transformation in ETL. The missing handling missing values is a, just a case when. We can solve the problem of having different type of mark with an uppercase. We can filter the relevant observation. We can rename a column. We can, again, filter the outliers. We can just do some math in order to create, to do the feature scaling. We can aggregate with account, for example, the number of clicks. And again, we can use a filter to split our train and test that set. The good thing about Oracle Analytics Cloud is also that some of these steps are automated for you. So feature scaling, handling the null values, and train test play are already done for you. So you don't have really to take care of them. There is one thing missing about understanding what and how to clean is I was talking about the outliers before. Why is really important to, to find and handle the outliers? Let me show you a practical example. We have a table on the left. The table on the left uh, stores for a specific company based on years of the experience, the average salary. You can see that all the salaries are within a certain data range. Row number 10 is the only person which was in the company since the beginning and the, is the CAO. And this salary is way out all the other salaries. The top graph, the blue line are the salaries and the gray line is a predictive model which is trying to fit all the 10 steps. You can see, since it's trying to fit also well, all the 10 steps, it's not really fitting any, any of, the, of the values really well. The bottom graph is exactly the same predictive model, but they just removed the outlier, the row number 10. As you can see, within the same parameters, just removing the outlier, the model um, fits much better the data set that I'm trying to predict. So understanding the outliers and removing them, it's a key factor that you should take into consideration. How do we find the outliers? Well, if we have just one dimension or we analyze one dimension at a time, we can use some of the feature of Oracle Analytics in the specific case explain that will tell us, look that you have a data range. It's the same data set, the same one data set that we were talking before. The data range goes from zero to 100, but the average is 87. So you can start realizing that the, um, the average, so the, the distribution of the, um, the points in the, in the wine is not really centered on 50, percent, 50 points, which is what you expect. And then you can plot. You can plot in this case, the points per wine, and you can immediately start looking at uh, outliers. In this case, we have on the top right, on the bottom right, all the null values. And on the left, we have all the values which are less than 80, which are really outliers. And maybe I shouldn't uh, include them in my data set because they are probably cork wine. And I don't want this to be included into my next steps. If I have two dimension, again, I can use the plotting options of uh, our analytics cloud to create a scatter plot. And then I have the option to create an outlier and it will show me that it has outlier, not outlier. And I can use this outlier filter to filter them out. Once I'm okay with the cleaning part, it's time to start doing what data scientists call feature engineering. So it's transforming values. For example, if I have a location, I want the zip code. 
If I have two location, for example, let's, let's think about predicting the taxi fare and I have the start position and the end position. I may want to create a column which tells me the distance from A to B because that could be a good predictor of uh, the taxi fare. Then if I have, for example, the name of a person, I may want to enrich that with the gender. Or if I have day, month and year in separate columns, I want to create a unique column with the date. As you can understand that two transformations on the right are easily achievable with data flow again. It's our ETL tool. On the other side, what about the other two transformations? In most of the other tools, you need to create or to collect an additional data source, which for example, for all the locations gives me the zip code or for all the names gives me the gender and to do the joining yourself. With Oracle Analytics, you have what is called data preparation recommendation. So if the tool understand that you have a name column, it will automatically suggest should you have the gender. If the tool, for example, understand that you are you uploaded a data set with the credit card number, it will suggest you look that you should obfuscate those. So it has a set of pre-built knowledge that allows us to, um, to enrich our data in a very easy way. As Philippe said earlier, in the future, you will be able also to create your own knowledge. So for example, if you have the golden dim product, you can say to the tool, every time you find a product ID, suggest to reach with product brand, uh, product cost, etc., etc. So you will be able to push centralized information to user without forcing them to build a task scheme. If you are more into spatial enrichment, so for example, in this example here, I want to categorize my clients in clients that lives, live within 200 miles from my shop and clients that live outside of this bubble. I create the red dots are my shops. The circle is the 200 miles circle. And you can understand which are the green ones, which are the, the um, the clients within this range. You can easily do that with a tool called Spatial Studio, which again is coming with the database, the Oracle database, and allows you to do easy spatial transformation. And you can easily pass from Oracle Analytics Cloud to Spatial Studio and vice versa, moving data set between one and the other. I, I wrote a little blog post about this, so you are more than welcome to, to go and check. Once we created this kind of transformation, it's time to have a look at the data. The first thing that any data scientist does is how he wants to have a, an overview of the data. And we have the same with OEC. This is the data overview. It tells you which columns you have, what is the column type, what is the aggregation if you set something, and it gives you also some sample values. At this point of time, most of the um, data scientists, they do some deep analysis themselves. On, with OEC, we are lucky because we can have the tool telling us a lot of truth about the, uh, the column that, for example, we are trying to predict. And this feature is called explain. So we can select explain on any column in our data set. Again, using the same example as before of the wine, I click on points and I ask to the, uh, to, to the OEC instance, explain me points. And we'll... OST will first tell me, look, that this is distribution of the points. Again, something that I've been able to plot before. And also it will tell me, for example, the average points for all the other dimensions that I have in my data set. Again, all these charts that you see, which are automatically generated by Explain, you can click on them and you can import it into a project for free. So instead of starting from a white canvas, you start from a pre-built content automatically generated by the tool. On top of this, explain gives you some extra information. The cool thing that I like is the key drivers. So explain will tell us, look, that if you want to predict the good um, wines, you should use the price, the price being I was being in the price, and the region. Those two are the main drivers. In this case, as you can understand, 
I'm not doing deep analytics on the text, on the, the, on the um, sample description as Brendan was doing before, I'm working at a higher level. So it will tell me already, look that if you want to build a predictive model based on the columns that I see, you should use price and region. It also will tell me, look that which are the, the patterns and the outliers within my data set. On top of this, I have options also to basically create small models directly within the visualization tool. For example, I can create what is called natural language generation. I'm a football fan, huge football fan. I love watching football. So this is just a case of if I'm the owner of a team and I want to buy a left wing or any wing, I know that the two most important factors for a wing are the stamina and the crossing. So I can create a natural language generation view and I put stamina and crossing as values and the name of the player as attribute. What this is doing is saying, look that if you really want to buy a wing, you should buy either Gonzalez, Bao, or Correa because they're really good on stamina and really good at crossing. So there you have already the pick is already the tool telling you some truth about your data set. Again, this was just a, an example. Is what I call easy models. Another example is same stamina and crossing. I put them into um, scatter plot. I can create clusters. So I can tell, create me five clusters, for example, uh, with the K means algorithm, and it will divide the data set, all the players available in clusters. So if I'm really looking at the uh, stam, uh, for a wing, I should look in the purple zone, for example. And I can add filters, for example, based on the age of the player, on the, um, on the value of the player itself, the years of contract remaining, and I can filter my selection. This is easy models because are easy to implement, but also because they are a little bit limited. The predictive model, the clustering in this case, will only analyze stamina and crossing, will not analyze any other columns I have in my data set. If I want to create a predictive model which uses the columns that I decide uh, that has to be used, it's time to go a little deeper. It's time to use data flow again. There is a step within data flows that allows you to train a model. When you select it, you have first to understand which type of problem you are trying to solve. You are going to predict a, uh, a number. You are going to try to classify the wine in good or bad. Or the same one could be classified in several different classes, A, B, C, and D, based on always on the score. Or you want to do some clustering. Once you select the type of problem, you will be able to select which type of algorithm you, will, uh, you want to use. And once you select which type of algorithm, you will be able to select which parameters. At this point of time, if you are not a data scientist, you start getting lost. So, I can understand which type of problem I'm trying to solve, but which algorithm should I choose and which parameter should I choose? I don't really know. And I don't know if you remember what Brendan said before. He said clearly there is no free lunch. There is no model that is always performing better than others. What data scientists do is they try one, two, three option. You can do the same because you can create a data flow, you select an algorithm, you select a set of parameters, and then you evaluate it. If you don't like it, you change parameters or you change algorithm and you create and you do it again. The good thing about OAC is that it will show you something like this. This is the confusion matrix telling us how many predicted value are matching the actual values and how many not. So if you just abstract this, you want to maximize the smiley faces, which are the matching values, and minimize the set faces, which are the non-matching values. And OSC will give you such an interface in, the, in case of classification for all the models that you create. So you can easily compare two or more of them and choose the one that optimizes the KPI that you defined earlier. Again, there is no single truth. Depending on the KPI that you choose, this will drive the model selection. 
let's see a simple case. Let's say that we want to optimize just the predicted values one is good when the actual one was good. If you compare the two, the top model is scoring better than the bottom one. It's scoring 30 ones more with predicted good one and actual value good one. If instead we change the KPI that we use that we use to measure our um, our model, for example, using what is called the precision, I want to understand how many good wines I predicted. Sorry, how many good wines I predicted and were actually good wines on top of the total number of predicted good wines. If you do the math. The bottom model in this case is better than the top model. So the first, uh, the first step that I told you you have to do it outside of the tool is actually really important because at this stage will drive your decision on top of which uh, model to choose. Once you did this kind of work on top of several different, um, several different models use various ETLs, then it's time to use the model that you picked as the best model and use it in order to make predictions. And with OEC, you have two different options. First one, use on the fly. You have a model built on top of your trading data, and then you want to score some other data. So you attach to this some other data within OEC, and then you say, I want to create a scenario. Create a scenario allows you to select which models which model you want to use between the models that you created or as we will see later that are available in the database once you select the model you have to match the columns which are being used to create the model with columns that are coming from the data set that you're trying to predict and then the predictions are available as extra columns within your project and you can use them as you wish in order to create a visualization or tables or whatever this use of, um, on the fly is good because it gives you immediate usage of the predictive model. It has a single drawback that if you create several visualization, for each visualization, the model will have to recalculate the predictions. So the more visualization you create, the more like horsepower you will need to, to have uh, in the backend to, to have decent performances of new project. On the other side, if you want just to take the data set, the new data set, and just run all the predictions and, uh, at one, and, and you and create a new data set where containing the new data and the predictions together, you can do so with a step of the data flow, which is apply model. Again, you click on apply model, you select the model, you do the column matching, and you select which columns between the predictive value, the confidence percentage, and the prediction group you want to include, and that's it. You have a new uh, data set within Oracle Analytics Cloud, which contains the new data together with the predictions. So we started with a problem. We want to become a data scientist. We saw the tool, we saw the process. If you follow me as of now, well, congratulations, you are now a data scientist, more or less. Uh, Becoming a data scientist is not easy. It's, again, se several steps one after the other. But let's say there is a lot of required knowledge. If we start with zero knowledge about data science, we start with this little dot, 50% chances. If we have to classify a wine as good or bad without knowledge, 50%. Yes, good or not. Let's say that we learn a little bit and we create our first model within OEC, and that gives us 60% of confidence in choosing a good one. Let's say that we push really hard on OEC, and we change a lot of parameters, and we did a lot of tests, and we were able to achieve the 80% confidence of choosing the, the good one. As you can see, the bubble starts increasing. What about going from 80 to 90? Well, that's a big step and requires a lot of knowledge. What about 95? Well, yet another big step and probably OEC is not good enough for us. What about 97, 99? It's increasingly, increasingly difficult 
to provide more accuracy on top of the same data set because the knowledge needed in order to get a little bit more it's huge so i told you you will become a data scientist and now i'm saying you will never become a data scientist where is the truth the truth is in the middle because yes we are not becoming a data scientist within one week only using oracle and out but we already started our path into data science why well because we understood concepts like data cleaning why it's important to handle the null values the outliers we understood the concept of feature engineering why it's better to calculate the distance between a and b if we want to predict the taxi fare while it's good to create how, how we create more um, the models and how we evaluate them because evaluating models and deciding which model is the best is a key factor for any data scientist and also we understood what is feature selection and what the tool is telling us that is important and maybe then the next time we understand we listen to the tool but we are also able to do a little bit more of, of research in the data set to come up with extra features and at the very end even if we created a model that only was for example 70 percent accurate is still far better than the 50 percent position that we started with so it's still 20 percent increase in sales let's say let's say for our organization but then what's next what's next for example what well, what if we want to provide a production ready machine learning deployment or we want to achieve high accuracy this is where a real data scientist helps because he will know how to optimize the model how to build for example in the database and how to create the best features and select the best features for to fit the model at the same time as i said oec and also all the other like uh, approaches to machine learning which include like uh, using pure python or r are basically taking the data from the data source extracting and doing and, and doing the crunching in an external machine as you can imagine this has problems with like uh, security or like the, the versioning of the data what if instead we could push the machine learning into the database this is if we can do that we can first of all keep the data where it is second use the power of the database which is a machine power enough in order to do massive data manipulation if you are in an oracle database as we saw earlier you have oracle machine learning which allows you to do that and good thing about OEC is that allows you to reuse, as Philip said, machine learning models built in the database by data scientists, as Brendan did before in the wine talk, and just use them in OEC with just not even a SQL anymore, just a set of uh, steps in a GUI. So now you don't have any barriers to data science. If you want to go deep you can start building in OSC, start understanding or start also building in the in the database with oracle machine learning the next set of slides are just a few hints if you want i wrote uh, the uh, service of blog post about kind of becoming a data scientist the same steps that we saw uh, now in my company website and there is the link there you will have all the slides later on if you want to see the same kind of one machine learning problem solved only with OEC. You have a video there where you can see from the data set to the prediction everything done in OEC. And again, this was not for this time. The uh, the talk that we did before is the case of doing part of it in OEC and part in the uh, database. The last thing is Inside Lab is a program from my company where well, we ship to you um a data scientist and within the that with the within your company and our data scientist will not only solve a data science problem but will teach you how to solve so next time you will be able to do it by yourself so i hope you now don't have any more problems don't have any more limits in order to machine learning in the oracle tool set oracle analytics cloud is a great first step if you want to go deeper, there are tools in the database that allows you to solve any kind of data science problem.
Thank you very much.